Lord, we thank you for your goodness to each one of us. God, we thank you for, Lord, the way you work in us, the way you love us, the way you move through us. We thank you for all that you're about to do, God, in our lives, in our families' lives on this earth. God, we just thank you, Lord, that we are known by heaven. We are known by you. You know our name. You know our address. God, so incredible. We worship you tonight. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will come and just constrain us in your presence, God. Lord, take us to a new place. Take us to a new, new heights, new depths, God, in you, Lord. We're so hungry for more of your presence, more of your power, God. Lord, I just commit this meeting to you. I commit this time to you. I commit my life to you. I commit my voice to you, God, and just ask for your help. God, and that uh, you will just uh, use me, God, and just release your word through me, God. I pray that um, whatever is to come forth will come forth, and whatever is to fall to the ground and die will that will do that, God. So I just commit this time to you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Thank you, God. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm happy to be here tonight that I've made it. <laughs> I've had quite the week. And uh, but God is good. God is faithful. And, um, you know, I had advertised and promoted this meeting tonight as um, fifth generation warfare. And, you know, I. I just feel God's presence all over what I'm doing, and he has totally rearranged everything. It What started was as one meeting went to two. Now, um, I believe tonight will be the first night, the first session of a series of meetings, seven meetings that I'm calling um, a defining moment of history. And um, if you haven't watched Nikita's message and her husband Terry from last week. Please watch it. There was so it was so full of nuggets that um, that is like a foundation to where where I am going because she spoke um, on you know the army, what it means to be in the army, and um, she was talking about you know when she was going into the army. She was on the bus. The bus took them all to the to the army camp, and and there she had to take off civilian clothes and put on her army clothes. And from that moment on, she was taken care of by the army. They provided everything for her. She was in a different world, in a different realm. And I believe that is a picture for us tonight of that <clears throat> we are in a new place of history. And we are in a place that uh, the bus has arrived at the camp <laughs> and we're on the bus <laughs> and um, we're in a new place. We're taking off civilian clothes and we're putting on our army clothes and our army boots because we're entered an era of war and warfare. I believe we have crossed over at the last Passover. We have crossed over into a defining moment of history. The demonic realm has invaded our planet and we have crossed over into the, the most significant Passover to occupy and to take territory in partnership with the Lord. Now, just before Passover, for all the meetings I was doing, I just felt this urgency to, to speak and to preach on the fact that we are about to cross over a very significant time and that we needed to do and partner with God in whatever was needed in us to press through that gate, to press through that threshold with him into this new place. And... Um, I was at a, a conference and I believe that happened. And uh, I had a vision during the, the worship of that meeting. And I it was a very a, 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 uh, anointed moment. And I saw 
an army with G at the back, looking at it from the back, with Jesus at the, the head leading, and everyone was crossing over, a vast army. And And it was uh, it wasn't a, a, a hurried thing. It was a determined, fierce, slow saunter. We were sauntering on our horses, going across. It was so powerful. It was far more powerful than if we were galloping. It was just like a, de a determined authority of God and the army. We didn't need to 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 fight or to rush or to we just sauntered over and we crossed over into a whole new realm into a whole new age i believe and i think we're now moving out as an army to take territory and um, i believe we're the forty thousand that have crossed over because in joshua 4 13 it says about forty thousand prepared for war crossed over before the lord for battle so the army went first. Not everyone was in the army. You have the vanguard, the frontliners who go ahead, who take the brunt of the battle. And God has an awesome new breed, you know, prepared and have crossed over and are moving out now. They've arrived at the camp. They've taken off <laughs> their civilian clothes and they are ready for war because it's getting strange on this earth, on this planet. I was listening to Elon Musk uh, talking with Tucker Carlson. I don't know if anybody saw it. It's worth listening to two nights, he, he saw it. And you know, he said, things are getting weird and they're getting weird fast. Those are his words. <laughs> things, he said, things are gonna change dramatically in 2023, this year when, when Tucker Carlson kept pressing him about, well, when do you think? You know, he, he was trying to get some real answers out of him. What's going to happen? When is it going to happen? And he said, well, this year, 2023, you know, the push for AI, you know, it's not as if AI is going to be coming. It is here already, and it is dangerous, and it is evil. It's being used for evil. The banking systems are collapsing. The economy is collapsing. The dollar is collapsing. And uh, if you watch the news, I mean, I watch uh, Fox News, the, um, the mayhem and the chaos in the streets that are happening right now as thousands upon thousands of young people rioting and just smashing stores and taking whatever they want, you know, and the summer hasn't started yet. So what are we in store for this summer is something and i was listening to paul keith davis who i respect a lot and he didn't explain why but he was giving a word for canada and he felt like lawlessness a wave of lawlessness was about to hit canada and i was like oh dear god because every time i see these things on the news i think don't come don't bring it here <laughs> don't let it come here in canada because we've been pretty you know, strange things happening here, but we haven't had the lawlessness in the streets. So we don't know what is upon us. So civilization is on the brink, I believe, of, of just a, a, a collapse. And, and uh, we have to understand what God is saying and what our part is in it. So through, I feel he has called me to birth these seven meetings, and they're all related to this moment in history. Each one has a different theme. I will, I will at the end, I will put it in um, the title of each session. Um, I have a file, I will put it in the chat, and I will promote it and hope you can all be here for, for, um, for each one, because I think they're important, but, but um everything is going to be recorded and everything um will be on my youtube channel let's see if i can put it here a file hmm. i thought i knew how to do this but doesn't look like it. Anyway, I will email it out. 
So yeah, it will be on my YouTube channel. Um, I post things there on my website too, and on my I have a Substack account where I put my podcasts and some of my words also. Um, I am I have just recently um, opened up a, a Rumble account um, in anticipate not in anticipation but just in case um, YouTube takes me down. They've already given me one strike and um, and that's the world we're living in now. So I have to make um, plans, you know, for whatever may happen. So I'm opening up a rumble. So if you if for any reason you can't find me on YouTube, look for me on rumble, please subscribe and like and share. I think what I'm sharing in these seven meetings are so important. And uh, not everyone will agree with it, but I believe it's from the Lord. Um, I, he put this stuff together and, you know, just completely turned it around today and mixed it all up and lost my place and found it back again. So, yes, yeah, so please share and subscribe and check it out. So, over the weeks ahead, we will take a position in the war room of heaven and receive awareness, instruction, and strategy the commander in chief wants to impart to us. It is important to understand that we're now embedded with the Lord in a war campaign. This is not a battle, this is a campaign to enforce the kingdom of God on earth. I believe it's naive. You may not agree with me. I believe it's naive to think that with the depth of evil that has penetrated our world, that victory will come fast, will come with a fast and easy fix by the Lord. And I, th I you know, it, it seems to me that some people are, are, are believing for that. that God's just going to show up and fix everything and everything's going to be back to normal. I don't believe that's happening at all. The level and the depth of evil that's rooted in our systems, all world systems right now, is going to take um, a, a campaign. So I believe we have a lengthy struggle ahead of us, yes, with many victories on the way, but the ultimate and complete victory does not happen until the Lord returns. We don't have the exact time frame for that, but I believe that we are very close. Personally, I'm believing for 10 years, <laughs> could be more. That's just an opinion and a guess. We are in the times though of, the sum, of things being summed up in Christ for the end of the age. And um, I, in these, meet, in these um, sessions, I am going to just bring, highlight the reasons why I believe that. I believe it, we, it's clear in scripture. If you're looking at Israel, you know, and the prophetic of Israel. Israel is God's timepiece. So we have um, Israel to gauge where we're at in time. So we will do that. So the demonic foundation of the world we live in is represented by Babylon. It's a Babylonian system with a Babylonian structure. And in order to understand where we are at, where we are right now, and where we're going, we have to look back a bit and lay a foundation. Some of this I shared maybe four or five weeks ago, but I just feel I need to just go through it again. Um, I'm not going to go through it in detail. Uh, much of what I'm going to share is in my book, The Lord of Hosts, The, the Warfare of Heaven. And uh, I'm just feeling things are coming so fast. I'm going to have to revise that book again very soon. But um, anyway, it, it, it has the gist of in depth of the things I'm going to share. So Babylon was the golden head, Media Persia, the arms and the chest of silver, and Greece, the belly and the thighs of bronze. So as Babylon, the head was the brain of the beast, Persia was the heart of the beast. We see that the rage happening right now coming out of Persia, Iran. Greece was depicted by the belly and the loins and the thighs of the beast, you know, and that's um, showing the birthing that came through the Greek empire. 
of much of what we are living right now. And then, so I'm just skipping over all of these. Um, so Rome was the legs of iron, legs of iron and feet of iron mixed with clay. So as the church grew in power and Christianity became the law of Rome, Christianity, the life of God dwelling in vessels of pliable and moldable clay, soon developed into the hardened clay of religion, represented by the feet and the toes of the image, the iron mixed with clay. So in Daniel 2.41, it says, whereas you saw the feet and the toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another. So the Roman empire became divided as the life of God and the nature of the enemy cannot coexist together. I believe this represents the demonic spiritual entities that mingle with the seed of men and they cannot adhere to the true God of authentic Christianity. The empires of the world will remain divided as the wheat and the tares grow up to their fullness. That's what's happening right now. And until the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan are fully revealed at the end of the age. So we're going to see evil come to its fullness. And uh, boy, I don't want to see that. But we're also going to see the, the wheat the, 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 the kingdom of God growing into its fullness of the stature of Christ in this hour, you know, uh, when uh, his glory will rest upon us, will rise upon us and, um, and crown this army with glory that is riding now with the Lord. So get ready, be prepared for anything. Get ready for the suddenlies to hit you. The suddenlies of God, <laughs> sorry. So later in Daniel chapter seven, he's given a vision of four great beasts. So every commentary that I have read assigns Daniel's four beasts as corresponding to Nebuchadnezzar's four empires of the great image. However, I believe it's otherwise. We are never given the identity of Daniel's four beasts. Although Daniel was given the interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's image in chapter two, he's extremely shaken and disturbed by the vision of the four beasts that he sees. The principle of interpretation for Daniel's four beasts, I believe, can be found in the scroll of the book of Revelation. So the, there you have one scroll which contained seven seals of judgment. At the opening of the seventh, seal a series of seven more judgments were revealed that were hidden within so i believe that hidden within the matrix of the roman empire the last empire of the great image four more beasts lay hidden to emerge at their appointed time after the roman empire ended many empires emerged four of them as direct successors so I cannot go into detail with this now. <clears throat> it's in the book. Um, it's also in one of the words that I um, I posted, Israel and the Restoration and the Fourth Beast. So I believe the first one was France. The first was like a lion had eagle's wings. I believe the second beast was Russia and suddenly another beast, a second like a bear. The Russian Empire is raised up on one side with the Eastern, with Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and Asia as the three ribs held in its mouth. So, and the third beast, I believe, is Great Britain. It says, after this, I looked and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it. So England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales are the four heads of this beast of Great Britain. They're the four heads of Great Britain. The four wings represent the spread of this empire to the four corners of the earth with significance to Australia, New Zealand on the east and Canada and America on the west. 
So these nations of the third beast under Great Britain have been functioning in collusion over the last century until this present day. They are very involved in things that we have had no idea of what they're up to. <clears throat> so together, these nations, these five nations of the third beast, so that's um, England, Canada, America, New Zealand, and um, Australia, together they form an, an, an alliance, an intelligence agency called the Five Eyes Alliance. You can Google that. Um, it was not spoken about at all in years past. God showed me maybe seven, eight years ago. And, but recently I've been hearing it being spoken of a lot on the news, the Five Eyes Alliance. That's those five nations of the third beast. So these nations share intelligence data and they perform intelligence operations for each other when they are prohibited from doing so by their own nation's laws. So if one nation cannot perform a function because of their constitution, they will get the other nation to do the dirty work for them. And so they share all in all these things so they can accomplish anything they want on this earth um, according to their agenda. So these nations, the nations that suffered the most extreme totalitarian measures during the height of the pandemic were Australia, New Zealand, Canada. And I believe these nations were chosen as test nations to test the agenda of the globalists as they roll out their new imagined world that they're building back better. So we see the collusion between Britain, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand and um, in the agenda that's being rolled out in these nations. They couldn't do some of the things that they're doing in these nations in America because the people would not put up with it and their constitution is so strong. But they're getting away with a lot in Canada and Australia and New Zealand, crazy stuff. And I've been reading a lot of Dr. Robert Malone. Um, you might have heard of him. He was one of the, the doctors that um, actually created the mRNA um, vaccination. And um, he has spoken out very boldly about a lot of things. And he's been canceled. He's been attacked. He's been, I don't, he's lost everything. But he hasn't, he has, he's still going strong. He's speaking all over the world. <laughs> He's a brilliant genius of a man, and um, they're maligning him as, you know, just uh, as they do with when they want to take out someone. So he stated, if you, if he's, his articles are on Substack that I'm on, um, it's under Dr. Robert Malone. So he, he wrote a lot about the fifth generation warfare, which we're going to touch on in this session and in the next. <clears throat> He said, he's speaking about the five eyes. He said, it's the most powerful intelligence organization in the world. These people, he said, are trained to manipulate your mind. He believes that all nations are now captured client states of the World Economic Forum and are no longer functioning as autonomous national entities. And we're going to go in depth in exactly how the structure of what is happening right now in, in the next two sessions. I can't do that tonight. We're just laying a foundation. But um, presidents and prime ministers no longer run their countries. They are just puppets. They, you know, they earn their, their salaries. They do as they're told. The, the, um, the ones who are leading are in these multinational corporations that have trillions, literally trillions of dollars can do whatever they want to do on this earth. And they are doing it. And they have bought every, or the heads of every sphere. So the five eyes were, are the third, was the third beast. So the fourth beast now is now emerging boldly on the, the world scene. 
We read about the fourth beast. There's a lot actually in Daniel, but I'm just reading one scripture in seven, chapter seven, verse seven. It says, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns. So again, I, I don't have time to get into all of this, but the fourth kingdom represented by Daniel's fourth beast is now attempting to come out onto the world stage. It is a world government taking power over nations that have acquiesced to the rule of a cabal of unelected elites comprised of world leaders and supported by billionaires and multinational corporations. They are empowered by the demonic and they are moving to assume control of the earth under the guise of peace, order, and the protection of the world's resources. Into this environment, a ruler will one day rise, empowered by Satan, a chopper, a smooth walking, smooth talking man of peace. The world has become right now like the, I've been saying this for like four years and I keep saying it, but it's true. The world has become like the frog in the frying pan on a slow boil, except that the water right now is getting very hot. It's heating up and we're, I think we're going to have a hot summer. The fourth beast is a spiritual global beast. So it's not one nation, it's a conglomerate of nations ruled by a few. That it rules through a global elite government serving the satanic government. However, America plays a large and important role as they cannot succeed without America and American power. So it is important to note that all four beasts are all nuclear powers right now on the earth, all four of them. And the first three continue to play a role in the final act. As it says in Daniel 7, 12, it says, as for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So we see that all the, the three first beasts that they each rose to incredible power and then they each lost their dominion. But they're still around, still around causing trouble. So it's not to say that, you know, we're against any nation because God loves all the nations and he uses all the nations and his presence is in all the nations and his people are in all the nations. But right now, you know, Satan, you know, he's the prince of the power of the air and he is affecting this world, not for the good. So China has become a nuclear power and has grown in power economically and militarily and may soon surpass the United States as a world superpower. China is rising as a significant player in the beast system. Nations may appear to be enemies of each other in the natural, and that's what, you know, the enemy and, and uh, some of these leaders would like you to think that this nation or that nation is their enemy or their foe, but they are all serving one kingdom and one master, the prince of the power of the air. So he's just playing them against each other. He's actually the boss of them all. So we can see that this is by design as factions within the U.S. government in collusion with China have allowed them to infiltrate all spheres of society within America and the nations of the world, such as Canada, Africa, and South America. You know, they talk about China as the, their greatest enemy, and um, but yet China owns more farmland in the United States than anyone. They've bought up corporations. They're in, in every system. Why, why is that? You think that we could go, America could go, or Canada could go and buy up land in, and, and businesses in China? Never. But yet, they have been allowed to do this. They've been allowed to infiltrate nations all over the globe. And the United States could have stopped it. 
years ago and they did not but they have their reasons they're in collusion you know and we saw this when the the new brazilian leader who just got out of jail was booted uh the the uh, i forget bolsonaro was booted out a christian man wonderful man and this this new leader just came out of jail and the biden administration was helping this 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 um this new leader you know they sent the cia went in just before the elections to speak to to um bolsonaro to say not to resist and of course he lost and there was uh, the media didn't show it but there were like literally millions upon millions of people in the streets protesting for like six weeks straight they would not leave they would not give in but eventually they had to so this man is now the ruler and guess where he just went to visit china france just went to visit with china and started speaking some very strange things like turning their back on the us so weird things are happening in the world and um you know even on the southern border biden and biden is letting in young middle-aged chinese men at the border they're coming in lots of chinese men young and healthy who are they and why are they coming in they're coming into canada so you know there's things happening that we don't understand but there are malevolent demonic things underneath a system taking place god is well aware of it so this is not to scare anyone we're gonna we're we're here for a reason <laughs> we're called to this time because we are his soldiers in his army he's greater than god in us is greater than any demon or greater than satan god in us is all you know he's the majority so Iran now has nuclear capabilities with the possibility of delivering the system to launch missiles and continuously threatening Israel, who is also a nuclear power. So Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran all have nuclear capabilities and are now in alliance against the West, causing the world to be in a more volatile condition now then during the cold war era they are rising in power and strength in an attempt to dominate the world stage as we are being led towards world war three you know never before you know in the last years in the last decades did anyone even mention the word nuclear it was unheard of like nobody went there that was just too uh, too much of a scary thing now it's they're talking about it daily you know putin uh, putin i said putin like the putin in in uh, quebec <laughs> putin um talks about it all the time so many voices out there have great words about what god is going to do to destroy the enemy and I believe everything and 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 they believe everything will be back to normal, as I said. But the demonic kingdom is vast and its tentacles reach, stretch into and are intertwined and entangled in every sphere of the world. Nothing is untouched except the true church of God, the people of God. So success. You know, we have to look um, honestly at um, at the situation uh, with the Lord and think in critically using our minds and allowing God to speak to us, you know, without fear and um, understand the strategies that he wants to implement in the days ahead. So success requires taking out the root of all the rotten systems otherwise anything else is just a temporary band-aid can you see that you know you pull out a system out of this nation or this uh, sphere or this corporation you take them down you take down this leader so what you know 
the root, the head, it's like an octopus uh, over the earth. And uh, the roots of it, uh, the tentacles go deep into every nation and into every sphere and into every corporation, every business, everything. So there can't just be a temporary Band-Aid. Removing prime ministers, which we would like the Lord to do, and he may do, or bringing back Trump would be great. But even that will not affect real and lasting change. You know, he can be in maybe for four years. And he's limited in what he can do. You know, just before he lost, I don't want to say the word because it's the word that it took me down from off of YouTube last time. But after he lost, you know, he was at Davos where the WEF meets every year. He was invited to speak and he spoke and he pretty much told them where they could take their world global, global globalist ideas and what they could do with it. And he would have no part in it. <laughs> told them to go take a hike pretty much. And you know how Trump speaks. You know, he is in for sovereign borders and not open borders. And so he pretty much told them off and told them he wasn't interested. And right after that, Soros was on video on tape saying his days are now numbered. That he is just going to be a memory. And that is the power they have. They just, they gave him a chance. They said, well, we're going to take him out. They did. So Pandora's box and demonic portals have been opened all across the earth. So what does success look like? And I've been praying about that. You know, it can't rest on one man. It has to be on the strategies and the power of God. Success requires a mighty invasion by the kingdom of God. And that, I believe, is an end time showdown and a clash of kingdoms that is upon us. God has to go after the root system and take it down. That is not going to be a pretty sight. The world is going to shake under that. And we have to be prepared for anything and not get disappointed or angry or anxious. God has to do what he has to do. And he's on the move and he's crossed over and he's about to move. And that scripture keeps coming to me in Isaiah 42. He says, I've been silent for a long time, but now I will pant and I will roar and I will gasp. So we have to be in closely, closely attuned with him to be moving with him as his army and uh, not be afraid of anything. We're called to this. We're called to this. And we don't have to fear anything. You know, day by daily, I am losing every bit of fear. You know, um, it doesn't matter. So what if we're martyred? You know, it's a win-win situation. And um, he laid down his life for us. We can do it for him. So we don't cower or hide or back down. We are we are called to this hour. And, you know, I was thinking about all this and God reminded me and brought me to a, a, a word that I had published and written um, in October 2015. And it was called The End Game. And um, I was just wowed reading it, thinking, you know, this is for this is for right now. And it just tied in with this message tonight. So I'm going to read a. Uh, you know, a, quite a bit of it. it. Says, I was in prayer meditating on God's plan in and through nations. At that moment, I saw a picture of a chessboard and a hand moving the pieces or players with deliberation. Remember, this is 2015. As I watched, I sensed that the players were nations and that they were being strategically positioned by the hand of God. I sensed that the destiny of nations and their leaders 
were hanging in the balance, as in Daniel 5.27. I then heard the word end game. I was vaguely familiar with the term and thought it might be a movie. I wasn't sure what it, what it meant. When I checked the definition, I was greatly stirred to discover it was originally a chess term that depicted the final moves of the game of chess. The end stages of negotiation and the confrontation to bring about checkmate, thereby capturing the opponent's king. I like that. Deep in thought about this, I randomly opened my Bible to Jeremiah 18 and read verses 5 to 11, which says, If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation, I warned, repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good that I had intended to do for it. So my eyes then caught the title of the commentary beneath, which said the Lord of Nations, and it stated, both Old and New Testament claim that the Lord is the one true God and that God is supreme over all nations and all peoples. The scriptures affirm this supremacy as true, even when rulers do not believe in or acknowledge the one true God. Kings and emperors might believe that they control events in their realms, but they are wrong. The Lord God is always in control. He's in control of every nation. I knew that God was giving me understanding of global events taking place. Nations have been and are presently maneuvering, shifting, and forming alliances with other nations, choosing to either align themselves with the Lord and Israel or against him and Christ, his anointed one, thereby aligning themselves with Satan and with evil. There are many alliances that have been formed, such as the BRICS. I don't know if you know about the BRICS, but it's been in the news a lot recently. And this I wrote, you know, 2015, has been formed, such as the BRICS. The BRICS represents, it's an acronym that represents Brazil, Russia, India, China, South, and South Africa. So that's one of the alliances. The GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Council, which is Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates. The GIPS, the J J G I P I I P S, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Portugal, and Spain. The Bells, that's Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. The S C O, the Shanghai Corporation, which is Russia, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, with observer states Iran, India, and Pakistan, to name a few. Many of these different groups, alliances are pushing now toward a new world order currency. It is important that we see here and understand global realities through spiritual eyes and not through the media that is generally slanted. So I don't know if you've been following the news, but Russia, China, the BRICS nations are are trying to bring in a new a new currency and drop the US dollar, which is disaster. If, if the US loses the dollar, they have no more clout, no more power. And every evil winged beast will invade this planet. So they're doing that, but not only them, the BRICS, others are beginning to join with them. You know, Brazil, as I said, maybe even France, Saudi Arabia, 
um, or choosing to use a, the new currency with China and um, not use the US dollar. So they're up to no good all over the earth. All these alliances, they're all evil, you know, God, uh, they're, they're formed by, by, the, by Satan. In Psalms 2, 2, 6, it says the kings of the earth, they are preparing for battle. The rulers plot together against the Lord and against his anointed one. He said, they said, let us break their chains, they cry and free ourselves from slavery to God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. And there is a big push coming against Christianity right now. But the one who rules in heavens laughs. We have to remember that. God is not taken by surprise. He's not worried. He's not concerned. He's God. The Lord scoffs at them. Then in anger, he rebukes them, terrifying them with his fierce fury. For the Lord declares, I have placed my chosen king on the throne in Jerusalem on my holy mountain. That's the end of the matter. The king is on his throne. Satan is terrified of the king. So God's end game is comprehensive and it's global. It takes into account nations cities, communities, local churches, and individuals. A line is being drawn by God and nations are being given the opportunity to make the choice for or against the kingdom of God. We have to pray for our nations that they will choose God and that they will align with Israel. There are moves and counter moves occurring in the natural and and spiritual intelligence is the key to understand the church's intercession and strategy in the days ahead. In Israel, the Mossad is possibly the most formidable intelligence agency in the world as Israel stands secure under the divine mandate of God. Nothing outside of the will of God is going to happen in Israel. Not to say that bad things won't happen or they won't get shaken because that's in the Bible too. But nothing outside of the will of God and God's the end for Israel is glory. And nothing can thwart his plan and purposes from unfolding in the precise timings of God. Spirit intelligence as Elijah received in 2 Kings 6.17 and Reese Howells received during World War II is going to be vital to our strategic intercession in the days ahead. So we have to enter into a deeper, higher level with God in a tune with him to hear what heaven is saying. So God continued to reveal an inkling of a divine strategy when I stumbled upon an article of Canada's history during World War II. So this was all in the 2015 article. And as, I re as requested, requested by Britain, Canada became the nation chiefly responsible for air training in a program created by Britain, Canada, and Australia known as The Plan. So all these things, you know, they were just jumping around in my spirit. I'm not sure what they all mean, but Canada was significant in the plan, in the air training of the air war. And, um, you know, I was listening to Arthur Burke the other night and he was, you know, his whole um, talk was on the air, understanding the air and the, you know, what's going on in the air. He says, we have learned everything we, we need to learn about the land and taking the land, but we need to learn to understand what's happening in the atmosphere, in the air, above our homes, above our nations, what the enemy is doing, you know, what's, what's going on so that we have discernment of what the enemy is planning. So, you know, I'm just starting to think about that, but that's something that you can start thinking about, of, you know, increasing your discernment of what's going on in the air over our nations, over our communities, you know, and I just thought it was significant that Canada was chosen 
and this was you know in world war ii for air training and in a plan called the plan or bcatp which is british commonwealth air training plan canada was chosen as the primary location because of the <laughs> sorry Canada was chosen as the primary location because of the possibility of enemy attacks on Britain. So this was also I wrote in 2015, so I was shocked that I was, you know, writing about these things. Five Eyes is another intelligence alliance comprising these same nations formed for global surveillance and intelligence through communications. These programs were all formed in the natural and, of course, therefore subject to corruption and to malevolent intent. So I'm just, um, I might go a little bit longer than usual because I just have to get through this to lay the foundation. So we have to understand what the stakes are as all these national alliances are forming and um, things are heating up on the earth in every realm you know there's bad news happening we want some good news god we want some victories so the BRICS has been on the news a lot as i said over the past weeks as all these nations move to consolidate power against the united states and the u.s dollar and their alliance is growing larger in influence and in power. So America is looking weak on the world stage and a world without the restraining force of America is anarchy. And we see anarchy starting to chip away at the foundations in America. The stage is being set for wars and rumors of wars. America has acknowledged that it has nuclear technology. I just heard this last night in the ukraine in a city captured by russia russia has their nuclear technology and they're threatening russia over it not to touch it of course you know is russia going to listen and what are they doing what kind of nuclear technology is in russia i mean in in the ukraine and through recent leaks it's been re revealed that the u.s has boots on the ground now in ukraine in which they said they did not and they were, were lying to us but it came out through leaks so you know the stage is really being set for you know wars so this is one level of warfare warfare throughout the centuries the earth has endured various models of warfare or generations of warfare but more importantly for the saints, we must have understanding of the 21st century warfare now targeting the citizens of the world. And we need to take up our spiritual positions of authority. So I'm going to quote a, a little bit, quite a bit of what Dr. Malone said about this uh, new type of warfare. He says, if we're going to win this battle, we have to understand the battleground. We have to understand their technology, their strategies, and their tactics. In first generation warfare, we historically have bows and arrows and swords, which were made obsolete by muskets. Then we had organized battle, battle lines, and even trench warfare in the second generation warfare. And third generation warfare, we moved to organized battle with gunpowder that was made obsolete by the German Blitzkrieg, which was me me mechanized warfare. What made that obsolete? The shock and awe campaigns in the United States against Saddam Hussein, among others. That was then made obsolete by terrorism. That is a fourth generation warfare. That is a mixture of kinetic and psyops of information warfare and kinetic warfare, fighting over territory and control of territory. So fifth generation warfare is where we're at now because of technology, is a war of information and perception. 
The basic idea is that in the modern era, wars are not fought by armies or guerrillas, but in the minds of common citizens. So this, this type of warfare, I mean, there's still, you know, warfare in the battlefield, but they're using high tech, um, high technology with drones and unmanned drones now. So everything is different because of technology. But they're also using technology on the citizens of the world. Your mind is the new battleground. That's why there's so much, you know, articles and stuff out there. And God started um, talking to me about critical thinking from, from a couple of years ago. I wrote articles on the mind and critical thinking because your, your mind is the new battleground. This is not, he says, this is Dr. Malone, this is not an exaggeration. This is a standard military strategy now being employed on their own citizens. Fifth generation warfare is the technology that's been deployed on you over the last three years. Molding, controlling, and capturing your thoughts, your emotions, and beliefs are the objectives. It is a new battleground and it has been deployed by the military, largely in intelligence communities in the entire Western world in an amazingly harmonized fashion during the COVID crisis. You know, and it came out, it was leaked that the, the, the strategies that were rolled out during the last three years were led and um, headed up by the military, not doctors. In true fifth generation warfare, you do not know who your opponent is. You don't really know who is managing the message that has been targeting you. Over the last three years, Western governments, non-governmental organizations, transnational organizations, pharmaceutical industry and corporations, media and financial corporations have all cooperated via public-private partnerships, which I assert is a euphemism for fascism, to deploy the most massive globally harmonized psychological coordinated propaganda or operation in the history of the world. Wow. With this campaign, so we can understand how crazy these last three years have been. It's been a, a rolled out warfare against the world. With this campaign, the governments of many Western nation states have turned. These are key military grade psychological operations, strategies, tactics, technologies, and capabilities developed for modern military combat. So it's developed for war, but now turned against their own citizens. These are inconvenient facts. The world that many of us believe existed no longer exists if it ever did. So, you know, it is amazing. They have, I mean, they have studied the mind for centuries decades anyway and um and and have found different ways to manipulate the mind they have different terms for this military terms and um and it's used in advertising in in getting you to do what they want you to do to think the way they want you to think it's so crazy you know i i don't know if you noticed but if I click on, on Facebook, I see an ad for whatever. I saw an ad for a bathing suit. I clicked on it. Well, I was bombarded after that with ads for bathing suits nonstop. And it happens every time. And it's the algorithms that are targeting you. They know you. They know what you like. The algorithms, I don't fully understand the technology, but I don't know. I, the way I think about it is like this, that movie, The Matrix. I don't know if you watched it. And um, a, a lot of people said that that was a, a clear picture of <laughs> the cross and 
not really, but you know, there's a lot of biblical themes in there about the red pill and having your mind open and you begin to see and understand, you know, where the rest of the world was mesmerized, but they had these machines that kept, you know, coming after them. I see those big monster machines in the spirit realm, like in cyberspace as algorithms targeting you and um so they know everything about you they know how you're going to think about something what you're going to do they're collecting data on you about everything they're they're passing laws and policies now that's giving them the right to collect every single thing that about you um I mean, ridiculous things that you wouldn't think they would even want to know. They know every detail. And they're allowed to do this. When you click on this, on the, on the, what it says, um, do you agree with this in the agreement? And you do the little tick because you don't want to read 10 pages of what the agreement is. You know, in that agreement, you're giving them the right to use your data. And, um, and in our country, the, in Canada, they've just included that now in, I forget what it's called, but even for, you know, your taxes, you know, medical, whatever, that they have the right now to collect um, everything about you. So, so, you know, we're going to go through in, in the, in the, um, in the coming meetings, you know, lots of things God showing me about strategies. But uh, we have entered an, uh, uh, an epic season of profound intercession in a season of war. I'm just going to share with you. Um, Some strategies, I felt God said, strategies to win. Just a few. This is not anything in detail. We'll, we'll go in detail, you know, in, in um, other meetings. Because God is our strong tower and he's our refuge. He will empower us to discern de demonic attacks and provide strategies to break their power and their grip. And we always have to remember they can't touch us. You know, they're going after, they want to keep a, a grip on, on the people of the world. They don't want to lose the harvest that we're going after. But never be afraid because God is fully in control of our lives. We are his army. We are his soldiers. We're his daughters. We're his sons. We're his children. We, he is our strong tower and he is our refuge. So a few things that um, I felt, you know, that were important. Number one, the prince of this world comes. He has nothing in me. That is something God has been working on us over the last few decades to get us ready for this day. He can have nothing in you. That is the only thing that will give him any power in your life. So stay in a place of humility and repentance, you know, and ask God to just check your heart regularly. Because the prince of this world is coming and we have to be able to say he has nothing in me. Number two, get out of Babylon. God keeps telling me to tell the world, get out of Babylon, detach, begin to detach from the things that tie you to the world, the Babylonian system, as much as you are able. It is not, I don't think, 100% possible to fully detach. You know, because we, we don't want to get rid of our iPhones. We don't want to get rid of certain things. But, you know, who knows in the future what it may come down to. But as much as you are able, begin to detach from this Babylonian system and from the things of the world that, that have your heart. Nothing in this world can have your heart. Number three, get undercover. Find your safe place under authority. When a storm comes, what happens? When a storm is coming, you run for cover. 
you run for safety, you run for a safe place. You know, and um, I am just becoming aligned with a, a dear, dear, dear father, friend of mine that God just said, I want you under him. He's your, he's going to be your safe place. Just told me that last week. And I was like, wow. And I felt like he said, yes, you are going to be with him. And doors are because of that, because you are in a safe place, you'll be protected. And, and uh, this is a spiritual safe place as I submit to him and also doors are going to begin to be fling wide open because i'm in that safe space so i know over the last three years with covid you know people have been moving around from place to place and wandering and some not even bothering with church doing online church and you really need to be in the place god is telling you to be in and he may speak to you you may have thought it was one thing before, but now he's going to speak to you and say something else like he just did with me because he wants you in a safe place. So that, I mean, uh, I'm got, being aligned with his father and his church. He's a dear friend. It doesn't have to be a church. It could be, a, you know, a accountable to leaders in a, in a group, in a house church. But whatever it is, whatever God, you need to know, you need to hear from God. You need to find your safe place. And for years, you know, like 25 years, God's been showing me this picture of this storm, you know, old farmhouse. The kids are playing outside. The sky is getting black. You know, the storm is coming. And the mother is shouting, get inside. The storm is coming. And the children begin to run. And they get inside into a safe place. And that is what is God, I believe, is very prominent right now. I feel God is saying, get under cover. You know, a lot of people don't believe in covering. I believe in covering. God has shown me scripture for covering. I firmly believe in it. It's not the same thing as alignment. You can be aligned with certain groups or alliances or, you know, networks. So that is a wonderful thing because in alignment with others, there is um, the anointing is um, spread, but um, covering is a different thing. Covering is a family, a mother and a father covers their children, right? So think of it in those terms. So you want to be in a safe place with people you trust, who trust you, who have your back who think about you, alliances, you know, and uh, networks don't necessarily, are not necessarily thinking about you, but you want that in your life. <clears throat> Just putting that out there, you can pray about that. So that was what, number three, number four, renounce division. You know, even though we may not think we are, we are, you know, we can be quite divisive and I, I am guilty too. There is a great dunamis power in agreement. The enemy knows this, and that is why his chief strategy is to divide and conquer. The saints must renounce division in this hour. When the storm is coming, we need each other. That's when we band together. We can't be, you know, and, and it's, it's terrible that it takes that for us to finally become a body and care about each other. I mean, it doesn't matter what you believe or what I believe when the storm is about to hit us or the enemy is about to attack. We hold on to each other, right? So the saints must renounce division and learn to work together in a corporate union in the power of agreement to defeat the enemy. Resist the temptation to be offended, to be angry, to be too religious, to work with others. Not every, you're not going to perfectly agree with everyone. So just let those things go and, and um, you know, stand with each other. And uh, one, two, three, four. Number five, know the power of your covenant. That's why I felt led to ask Mary Audrey to, to speak because that she loves that topic. And um, that video is on our YouTube website. If you haven't seen it, you know, it's pretty powerful. There's an anointing on it. We must know the power of our covenant understand and apply the power of our covenant in christ 
This overcomes fear to maintain a place of peace and joy that provides the strength to persevere. When you truly understand your covenant with God and his covenant with you, because he keeps the covenant, then we won't have fear. We'll, we'll be bold enough to go out and do anything because we're in covenant. You know, and that message was preached, I don't know by who, but it stuck with me. But David knew the covenant of Israel and the covenant of, his la of the land. That's why he could so boldly shout at Goliath and run at him. Because he knew the covenant and God was going to back him up. Because the land belonged to Israel. And the last one, no, not the last one. Strengthen and train your spirit to have fortitude in the battles. You know, we do neglect our spirit and our spirit is man is meant to rule, not our soul, our spirit. Speak to your spirit, call forth your spirit, train up your spirit, you know, get in the spirit and press and push with your spirit. This comes from time spent in the crucible of God, with God. And the last one, agree with God. This is huge. I mean, there's so much power in agreement, but imagine the power in agreement with God. If, you, if he tells you something or if you agree with his word, there is massive power released in that agreement. Enemy knows that. The enemy has power in agreement also with his people. That was a, boosts him and gives him power. So rent, agree with God and render powerless the global mind control machine working to win you over to their side through agreement. That's what the fifth generation warfare is. They want to win you over to their side through agreement to sway your opinion, to move upon your emotions, to get you to turn away from your call, to turn away from God. So we are in this epic season of profound intercession. We've entered it. We've just crossed over into this in the last week, to a great season of war. And there is now coming a mighty wave of intercession that will sweep across the global body of Christ to undergird the work of angelic hosts in partnership to possess the kingdoms of this earth for our God, to release God's harvest from captivity and to take captive the enemy's prey. And we have to be fierce as lions and go after it on the offensive and not be afraid. I mean, don't do anything foolish, but do whatever God tells you to do. Just remember what Mary said. Do whatever he says. Whatever he says, do it. Our intercession must now graduate to the place of tactical accuracy that strikes the target. This comes only through an authentic union with the intercession of Jesus. Jesus is raising up a leadership that will unite with him in his intercession, strategic intercession that brings forth his ends in his campaign for dominion. So as Jesus's return draws near, the church needs to become more grounded than ever before in the Father's sufficiency in all things. In all things, he is sufficient. And the extreme perfection of his governance, he is the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator. So I hope I presented this in a balanced way in that, you know, yes, there is this terrible darkness beginning to sweep over the earth, but yes, the glory of God is rising upon his army. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. I'm going to put in the chat the links to the, the book on warfare and my substack, the message I wrote in this that has a little bit more depth on 
the fourth beast and all of that stuff. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for tonight, God. Thank you for keeping my voice. Thank you, God, for just being such an awesome, mighty, and holy God. Lord, that you are our strong tower. You are our refuge. You are our cover. Lord, we run into you. You are the covering. You are, you are the covering from the storm where we run and we hide in you, Lord. And we can stand in you and we can face anything and we can do anything and we can believe for anything because you are well able to do anything, God. So we, can't, we don't have to fear what is coming on the earth because we are your people and you protect us. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. You know, our homes are covered by the blood. Our families are covered by the blood. Lord, we are protected by the power of the blood of Jesus, just as the people of Israel were protected when they put the blood on the doorposts of their homes, Lord, during the times of the plagues. Things were happening, terrible things, but they were protected. And that is who we are. Will you do any less for us? No, you are going to watch over us. We are your servants. We are your arms and your legs and your voice in this hour. We are going to be fully protected by you in the, the things that you've called us to do. So, Lord, I fully believe that. And I pray that you will impart that right now to anyone who may be a little bit shaken or have any kind of fear, God, that fear will be moved. We take authority over fear in Jesus' name, and we command you to go in the power and the might of Almighty God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You have no place in us. We declare that. We decree it in Jesus' precious holy name. We will not fear you. We are coming. We are on the offensive with our king. The shout of the king is among us. The angelic hosts are with us. And we declare that now that we are coming in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen and amen. Thank you, God.